Chachos, welcome back to Planet Zoo. Welcome to episode 11 of our building series where we're building our zoo, Roars and Claws. And in the previous episode, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, we were building our panda exhibit, which is here. Um, and we spent some time pulling together all of the uh, infrastructure, pulling together the building and making sure that it's it's what we wanted it to be, especially from the sight line from the, uh, from the drafts in this sort of dog leg style um, of building and uh, all of the the pandas are kept inside here with a slightly outside uh, area for them to get to go and roam um, and all of the details obviously in, in the in the previous episode um, we've had to get another female uh, panda because the other one that we've got is uh, getting old now and so she's not going to be around for much longer sadly so we do need a, we do need another female in here uh, just to keep the the chain going but that's okay. They seem to be okay for now. They seem to be, they seem to be right. Our baby's doing all right. Still bounding along as 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 he does. Um, and so yeah, in this episode, uh, I was in a bit of a fork with to which direction to go. Um, we either need to come down this way and complete what's going to be in this in this area, um, or we need to come up here and do the elephants. Um, and so what I'm thinking is I. I need to do this organically. I can't rush this. I can't. I can't do this. I can't do too much at, at, at once. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to come down here. We're going to finish off this part of the uh, part of the zoo. Get whatever's on this sightline finished, so that we can then comfortably move to this area. Because then that leads us to coming around to this area and finishing this off. Um, and I already know and have an idea of what I want in this space. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on this area here. And um, I've, I've done a lot of thinking about what I want in this area and what's going to come in this area. And it's going to be Western chimpanzees. Um, I think I think it's going to be Western chimpanzees. So I'm going to build the habitat as if it's as if it's going to be them. Um, we're going to need some kind of water and we're going to need some kind of water barrier. They're climbers. So uh, we need to be we definitely need to be aware of that. Um, so yeah, we also need some kind of backstage area too. Um, that's probably going to be here, I'm thinking. Um, and we're going to need some more, um, specific things for this backstage area. Like we're going to need pens as if they were going to the vets and where they would be kept in storage and everything. So that's going to almost double up as their shelter as well, where they're going to sleep. So, as always, um, I'm going to do this as part of a build and update episode rather than doing it as a time lapse for obvious reasons. You don't want to be watching my time lapses because you'll just end up feeling sick at the end of it. So, uh, with that in mind, let's jump to the first update. All right, so time for your first update then. And uh, as you can probably tell by the crowds of people, we've already got some animals. Um, and we're kind of playing it fast and loose with the uh, uh, with the animals on this one, with the species that we've that we've chosen. And I've kept the UI and everything on because I'm going to need it in a, in a second. Um, so I've done a lot of research into this one, uh, and I think we're going to be okay with this in principle. Um, but I'm still a little bit torn. So we've gone for uh, these guys. So we've gone for the Western Lowland Gorilla and we've also gone for the Western Chimpanzee. Now they're not very happy at the moment because I've not sorted their habitat out and that's something that I'm going to do. And I'm, I've been doing these updates typically on pause for reasons of crashing and stuff. Um, and so anyway, the research that I've done, um, they come from a very similar part of Africa. So if you look in the Zoopedia, you can see that um, this is sort of the uh, Western part of Africa for the Western Chimpanzee kind of in the name really isn't it and the western lowland gorilla comes from still the west of africa but slightly lower down so i did i did some research research into these guys um to know whether they cross whether they cross borders or whether they're exclusive to these regions and the good news is they do um they do cross regions they do cross countries so even though they're primarily found in these regions they do they do go around um different countries and when they do meet in the wild they frequent with each other but they they don't socialize with with each other so they would tend to live in different trees they would never interact with each other they would never do anything with each other they just live independently to to each other they know it, that either exists um 
but they would never actually interact and they would never actually do anything. And that seems to be true in the game as well. So these guys down here, the gorillas, um, they're happily ignoring the chimpanzees. And the chimpanzees are happily ignoring the gorillas. They're not fighting, they're not interacting, they're not socialising. Um, they're not very happy. Like I say, I, I need to sort out their food and I need to sort out the situation with the climbing and, and the, the actual habitat itself because it's pretty awful at the moment. But... Um, yeah, so they have no um, water requirement, but I've put water in because I want this to be a bit of a, a waterfall effect um, along here. And I've started the, the idea of putting the pool in and I wanted it to be a concrete pool. I didn't want it to be a natural pool, uh, partly because it forms a barrier. So a natural barrier and there's some stuff like obviously we want to keep them away if we can from the pandas. So if there ever was an occasion where a panda had climbed up or the, the chimps and whatever the gorilla has has climbed then there's a and there's a physical barrier between them and that's water and so this is non-traversable for them in in the habitat they can't come they can't come over here uh and so i've started the, i've started the process i mean we all we had already decorated this anyway um but i just need i'm going to need to tidy this up um set out the the habitat limits as well this is far bigger than they actually need they would probably only need probably half half of this um but I do want to spend some time doing some proper backstaging area with some netting and um, some pens and, and things along here. So I think I'm probably going to end up taking some of the space uh, in the actual habitat as, as well for some kind of backstage area facsimile. Um, and I've also put the concrete walls. So the concrete uh, is at least five meters tall, so they can't actually climb up. They can't climb over. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm, go I'm going to hide the the concrete where I can with rocks and foliage and, and stuff so that it's not so stark and not so obvious and from a um, from a peep level perspective I'm also going to vary the terrain as well so it's just going to give us a little bit of a better opportunity to actually hide some of these um, some of these walls and some, some of this obvious concrete so that's pretty much where it's at at the moment um, I'm I'm going to do some more reading into these into these guys and see whether it is whether it is okay. But it looks like I say, looking at all of the the gorilla and um, chimp and the fact files and uh, all of the websites, uh, Park Chat for example, suggests that they can live together and they do live together in harmony and they seem to be okay in in the zoo. They're not causing any kind of conflict with each other. So I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, but with that in mind, let's hop to the next update. All right, so here we are with the next update, and look what happened. Um, I wasn't going to build their climbing structure so soon. I was going to wait and, and do it, but actually it turned out it was needed for their welfare. They were starting to get aggy. They were starting to fight um, because they were unhappy. So I built them this climbing structure. Um, it's just randomly put together, right? and I, it's turned out. All, it, I think it's turned out all right. Um, as far as climate structures go, I mean, I just there's no thought put into it. There's no planning. It just happened. That's just the way it was. And they seem to be using it. They seem to be happy, and they seem to be they seem to be going for it. So um, I've also put a couple of forage pits underneath um, the structure as well, just so it sort of allows them to go underneath and have a have a play under there as well. Um, and obviously I'm going to put some vegetation and everything around it so it's going to be a little bit more hidden than it is now. Um, and I've also gone ahead and I've put some of the toys and enrichment items closer to the uh, closer to the barriers because what was tending to happen is they, they tend to, to hide around the back here. They get quite stressed out quite quickly. I've noticed so I need to, I need to accommodate for that. So what I've done um, I've started to plan almost like a rock wall that's going to hide off the sleeping area um, and this this then takes them out of the the guest view completely uh, and it also means as well that I get a chance to actually hide the backstage area from the guest eye um, whereas before it was going to be very very much exposed so the rock wall at the moment is just there temporarily just so I know where I'm going to be putting all, all of the rocks uh, but you can see it's already doing the job it's already starting to, to hide that backstage area from the uh, uh, from the guests and I've also gone ahead as well and started the process of, of rocking off this back this back area here as well so it would obviously be um, fake rock right so it would be sort of just a bit rubbishy rock um, 
So that's what I'm in the process of doing now. Then I'll put the waterfall in, and then I'll bring this this around here as well, and then just finish off this finish off this area. I say the waterfall, make it move a little bit, and then I just need to do some detailing. I need obviously some drains and stuff along here. Um, and so that's pretty much it. I mean, most it's it's quite a lot of time that's passed with this one, but I've had to play out the game. I've had to play out how these are how these are going about it. And look, we've got babies, babies. Babies, babies. So they're happy, like running away. Huh? Uh, so they they seem to be getting much happier um, and attracting more and more and more guests uh, to it. The other thing that I've done, uh, I've just put a roof on the backstage area, and I've also started to plan out a second backstage area. Um, but I don't know, I don't know what's going to what's going to go on here. I need to have a look at some images of how the backstage areas for gorillas and chimpanzees look uh, because if I use any of the uh, rope and whatever on on here to create nets and meshing they're going to be able to climb it so I need to just find out how the game's going to be best to cope with the backstage areas um, one thing I have done though is I've just put the fence around this pen that I know would be a pen and then I just need to put the roof on and then something to climb on in the middle uh, similar principle actually to how we've done it in the backstage area or over the other side of the zoo um in the sense that it would just be a bland pen it's just it's just a holding pen it's not designed for any length of time it's not designed to be a serious pen it's just there in case they need to put them in there just to clean the the habitat or do some maintenance to, ha to the habitat or whatever they may need to do it's not and i think this is probably too small actually for the numbers that we're going to have in here but just gives you an idea um so yeah, that's that's how it is, and this is how it's looking on the on the skyline. I like that you can see from sort of like this this point of view, you can see them playing, you can see them running along the um, running running along the ropes and jumping and, and playing, and so you're sort of like drawn to go in that way. And it's the same same is true from the sightline of over here as well. So you've got the pandas just in front, and uh, you you can then look left and you can see all of the uh, there we go. There's one right now look good timing um, and then they're yeah so they're, they're happily sort of like climbing away my vets are doing some research at the moment as well um on them so the research level at the moment is only level one uh so that'll that'll take place um, and hopefully that's going to unlock some more like enrichment items for me as well and see what comes of what comes about we, we already had quite a few unlocked i don't know what primate i've previously researched in another franchise for it to then come through just research now but either way i still had quite a few enrichment items and so hopefully there's going to be some more that's going to be unlocked um but other than that that's it for this update uh so the plan of action is to carry on vegetating and uh, is that even the word vegetating and uh putting the rock wall in finishing the backstage area and um, so this is the next update all right so the penultimate update and uh, there's a couple of hours work that's gone into this one and uh, we're starting to make some pretty good progress um i focused all of my attention mainly on the backstage area i wanted to to make sure that that felt right um so that i could make any changes to the habitat uh, that i needed to make along the way so um i've not done anything with the landscaping within the habitat itself uh, i still need to do all of the rock work and i still need to do all of this this stuff around here uh, but what i have done is worked on this back area uh, that's cut that's sort of like customer facing um, and so we've now got a couple of uh, buildings that are now in place uh, so I've put the pens and I've just kitted it out with some stuff like I said in the previous update this wouldn't necessarily be where they would live or it would need to be any kind of um, habitable area as such they wouldn't be in there for very long it would only be a case of putting them in there if there's any kind of maintenance that needs to be done to the main to the main exhibit so sort of like a holding pen almost um but then you've got these two areas here and these are the sleeping areas and i've decided to do two uh two areas purely because when this exhibit becomes um a lot more full uh with babies and, and babies and whatever um we're going to end up having we're going to need quite a bit of space for flat roof and cover and whatever so uh, i've just put a couple of sheds in and i've varied the design slightly just to give it a bit of variation um, so it's just not one long uh, thing and then on the back here i've just put a bit of uh, backstage area in so i've used, just used the concrete to create a pad of um, 
a padded area that lorries and whatever would, would come in and it ramps down into the uh, main road so that lorries could come in past the entrance they'd go around the roundabout and then come back in this way um, I don't know if the turning circle on here would be uh, would be too small. Um, I feel that it might have it might need to be like a a round bend rather than a sharp L, but it's fine. Um, it does it does what it needs to do here. Uh, and then just detailing on the back, I've just put some of the windows in um, at the top because this is this would be the back end of the uh, of the actual sleeping area, so you wouldn't have office windows as such you, you tend to have these higher windows that you could open up and the the monkeys then couldn't climb out not monkeys the chimps and orangutan couldn't um climb out no it's a gorilla isn't it not orangutan and uh, let's get the animals right shall we uh, and then i've just um done the same down here so i've just put the concrete padding down this way uh, just to make it an area of, of maintenance and i've connected it to the llamas as well so we've now got a connection straight down to the llama habitat even though we've also got a road connection here so we've now got a bit of a a bit of a u um for easy access depending on what you needed to do and then i've just bought the path the staff path that was here i've just made that consistent so that at least from the guest view it looks like the path goes around this way and you can't actually see the staff area um although those guys seem to be staring at rocks <laughs> Having fun there, guys. Um, and then I've just started the process of putting the the foliage and vegetation up as well. So I wanted um, I wanted this tree to be in the middle purely because it sort of creates a bit of a, a hidden cubby hole. Didn't want to put anything like um, sunscreens or whatever up. Uh, I wanted I wanted it to be natural, and then this one to be exposed. Um, and then I've done the same with the trees along the uh, along the llama habitat, just to hide, try and hide some of the backstage area, so it's not so obvious. Uh, and also the same with the dividing bit between the road and the and the backstage area for for these for this exhibit. Um, so the next thing to do then on this one is uh, all of the actual terrain work and the the plants and whatever, and that should then complete this uh, complete this build, so we can move on to the next to the next bit. So with that in mind, here it is. And as if by magic, the skyline changes. And here we are with our final habitat, our finished piece of work. Uh, so I've just done some touching up along the front here, made sure that all of the uh, speakers and everything are in place, making sure that all of the, uh, the screens and everything are displaying as they should do. And the research is still ongoing with the vets, so this will update in time. And I've just made sure that there's enough donation bins around as well. And you can see that, um, the guests are crawling around the, uh, or swarming, should I say, around the actual windows itself, and that's exactly what I wanted it to be. I didn't, I didn't want to have too many contact points with this habitat. I wanted it to be very much a case of just one wall of the four that you could see, you could see from. Um, and so, if you now look through the windows, it's now looking a bit busier, and it's now looking a bit more habitat-like. So, you can now see that all the vegetation is in place. Um, and I've just done some tweaking along the climbing frames just to make it fit the vegetation, especially as these palm trees, they're climbable, um, so I've just made them cross over wherever I can. Um, and I've just moved some of the enrichment items as well, just so that they're a bit better placed. Um, and I've started to flesh out as well where things would start to grow um, and where the chimps would start to walk. So I've changed some of the terrain painting. Um, again, same way we've done all of the other habitats, just making it... Um, uh, making it look like it's trampled ground and making it look all as, as it should um, and like you can see they're now climbing and, and running um, and so this one I've with this side of the habitat I've it's always been in place but I've never really talked about it I've, I've got these diagonal windows the ones that lean in um, and it's really really nice that sometimes the orangutan uh, the not orangutans the gorillas will come in here and they'll sit and stare at the guests and that's actually quite a nice little quite a nice little feature um they just sit and he's eating fruit um they just sit and they just stare it's quite like it's quite good to watch um and this gives a good view as well in the sense of it, they get right up into the window and the guests can look over and almost tower over them and then the other side the the windows are, are straight they're vertical um so they they like they're always supporting the rock the rock work above um so you've got quite a nice little design difference here um, in the sense that 
this looks out to the main habitat and this looks out to the more specifics uh, and then looking at the habitat look it's all decorated so I've kept um, I've kept some open space at the back here for them to play and for them to run around so doing doing some reading uh, you tend to find that even though they're jungle animals um, they would still want space to run and if you put with the way that the game works if you put too much vegetation close together they're no longer traversable areas so um, I've, I've left all of this at the at the back I've left it free for them to run around and I've left all the bits around by the um, uh, by the backstage area I've left all of that clear as well um, I've only put it in the guest area and partly because this encourages them to spend most time here as well and they only seek shelter uh, when it's raining and when it's cold um, but with that in mind, I've also made a second shelter area down here as well. Um, so that if the other shelter is full or they, they, they can choose this one instead if it snows or if it rains. Um, and it means they're still, in, they're still in the area. They still stand a chance of being seen by the guests as opposed to being hidden away in their, in their shelter. I've also done the, uh, this waterfall. I think, again, just like the crocs, it's, it's running far too fast for the, for the type of exhibit that this would be. Um, but it's fine, it works. I've just used the Rapids foam again just to create a bit of movement and I've used the upturned um, uh, the upturned fountain splash just to create those ripples off the off the rocks. Um, and then because obviously it's, it's running quite fast here and um, it's bouncing off of this rock, it's, it wouldn't suddenly stop. So what I've done over this side is I've continued that theme of it moving and going into the drains that I've put in down here. Um, it's just put it, sinking the rapids foam onto the water, but right back. Um, so you just get the edge clipping, and now it's now it looks as if the current is coming down from the waterfall. It's hitting these rocks, and then it's sort of flowing down this way, and then it's bouncing off in a in like an S shape. So it, it just gives the idea of fluid water, even though it's it's not fluid at all. Um, but it also gives the impression that this calms down as it reaches this way so it's not so it's not so rapid now the they actually don't the animals here they don't use the water at all in any way shape or form so um it's just there for decoration it doesn't serve any purpose they don't even drink from it um when they're thirsty so or it doesn't seem like they have i haven't seen them i haven't seen them do it um but yeah i finished off this concrete pad and i wanted to make it concrete i wanted to make it obviously fake um as a, as a water feature rather than natural um, because that's what you see in zoos like it's not always about the natural habitat it's not always nice area to be in so that's what i've done there i've just made it um, very fake very concrete and this is just using the plaster piece off-grid plaster piece set that's all again there's no real there's no real trickery involved um had to change some of the rock work on here um as it turns out having this rock work that i've now completed to create the barrier um, when it coincides with the climbable area, this became traversable and they could get up onto the roof um, and then they could get out that way. So that was not a very good idea. So what I did was I just turned this rock up um, and it now completely stops them in their tracks. Their traversable area stops here. But it's nice to see them using this rock, these rocks as play area. So they'll jump along, um, they'll jump along and, and climb along the ropes. They'll jump down and they'll walk along the rocks. And that's just a nice little feature that I didn't even plan to happen in this habitat it just it just did um so yeah it's it's look at it's looking good it's um it's my first sort of habitat that i've done of this one i'm, I'm quite comfortable doing the other habitats this is the first one I've, I've ever touched any of the primates um and i think it's i think it's worked out all right this this bit's worked out particularly well um hiding the backstage area so from the from the guest from the guest area there's there's nothing there it just looks like rocks and you've got a few like peaky holes and it's not it's not uniform it's it's all quite natural it's all growing over around by the rocks and it does look it does look quite hidden um this side i, I couldn't do much with because it, it all became climbable so um i sort of just had to leave it as it is and just sort of try and hide the building where i can um, but it's only, I think, one window that you can see that from anyway, and it's there. And they, t and they tend not to frequent here. So what I've done is I've moved or removed stuff that was meaning that they were coming into this area. So all of the enrichment items, any climbable stuff and whatever, isn't in this area so that your guest attention 
is actually focused on the main the main part of the habitat, which is the climbable area here. Um, and so you don't actually notice the backstage area. And I decided to keep the wall as it was as well, um, purely because you, your guest eye is already distracted by the stuff that is in front of them. You know, they're, they're already looking at the chimps playing, and they're already looking at the gorillas sitting in front of them, and um, already looking at like, like what's, in, what's in front of them as opposed to the wall that's behind them. So I don't think it breaks too much realism that you can see this, see this wall. And when I've looked into habitats, and images of, of these sorts of habitats, you see that sort of thing. You see the rock work being done to make it look as real as possible. But then at the back, you just see a stark wall. Um, and at least in this in this instance, in this zoo, we've, we've taken the opportunity to try and hide the facilities area anyway. So um, at least at least we're making some sort of some sort of effort. And then coming over to this window as well, this is this is what we see. So you can see the waterfall on the right hand side. And you can see the um, you can see the climbing area uh, over here, and uh, yeah, the pool that's in front of you that's just sort of rippling, rippling away, um, and then you can see them playing on the ropes and everything. So from a sightline perspective, it actually looks quite good. It's um, it's everything as it as it should do. It looks like there's a jungle canopy. It looks like it's overgrown. It looks like it's as it should be, and the chimps are playing. And then if they are seeking shelter in this in this cave over here, you can sort of you can sort of see them from different windows and different angles. So it gives them an opportunity to hide away from the guests, but it also gives the guests the opportunity to, to still see. And considering the pandas next door as well, um, this is what we've done. So um, we've got the perimeter wall for the uh, for the primate exhibit here, and then you've got the perimeter wall of the pandas, and there's a gap in between. Um, I did contemplate putting a staff path and then the, the, the backstage area was going to be here but um, I thought that was going to be too noisy for the pandas. The pandas don't like too much noise. So I kept it separate. Um, but we definitely needed separate um, separate walls to keep them apart. And so that's what we did. Um, and then the actual cave itself, obviously it would all be fake rock work. Um, so it wouldn't be, it wouldn't necessarily be real rock work. Um, and so that's what we've done here. We've just evidenced that from the top, just to say, actually, they probably didn't make any effort for anything that the guests couldn't see. It's just going to be flat rock. It might even be concrete in real life. Um, and then it's just a fascia at the front that's just rock work. But I wanted to keep it consistent, so I've just used the flat rock just to finish it off. Um, and like I say, behind it, it's just completely bare land. Um, and that's just so they can run around and play. Uh, again, guest doesn't see it, so it doesn't matter. But they need the space to run around. And so that's uh, that's our that's our habitat. So from everything that we've done here, we can now um, we can now start to move on to to the elephants and moving around. And I don't know I don't know how far this series is going to go because the game's starting to crash quite a lot now. Um, and I don't know I don't know why. Um, and so I don't know if this is going to be going to last. Um, but what I want to do is to do this building where we do the aardvarks and whatever over here. Get the elephants done. I get my lion exhibit done here and then call it from there and see and see what we say with this with the series so i'm thinking probably another three episodes or so and then we'll we'll make a decision of whether we go on or or not um because at the moment i'm building in pause so um the idea of playing in franchise is is completely irrelevant now um doesn't actually matter so um yeah Let's see how that goes. But otherwise, thank you so much for getting to the end of this video. Uh, obviously, if you want to know when the next episode's coming out, please uh, leave a subscribe, leave a comment at the bottom, leave a like, do whatever you need to. Um, and like I say, on all of my other, other episodes, I'm happy to chat to you um, just to say hello. Um, otherwise, I will see you for the next episode. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.